Okay, I wanted to make this video because I found a definite lack of uh, uh, tutorials on iMovie's Precision Editor, and I just wanted to let people know what kind of features, what kind of power you can get out of this one little editing window. So what I've done is I've thrown a couple of old uh, videos together from uh, my dogs running around in the yard a few uh, years ago, and I just clipped uh, three clips with an overlying uh, picture in picture. And I just want to show you how all of these things interact inside the precision editing window. Now, to get to the precision editor, if you just double click right underneath, right here, where the uh, cut is between the two different uh, clips, just double click that, and it gives you into the precision editor. Now, from here, you have this is the first this is the first clip where uh, just before the edit point, which is right here. This is the second clip. And this is the edit that we're working on right here. This is the third clip down the uh, timeline. Um, and that we can worry about uh, uh, later on. But for right now, this is the edit we're working on. From here, you can also see the video for the overlying, uh, in this case, picture in a picture. And uh, this would also be a cutaway or a green screen or whatever else you want to have up here. Um, you can work with this in a limited way from the precision editor, but for right now, let's just deal with what we have right here. So if you put your timeline anywhere over here, you can listen to the edit as it exists. And so let's just play that real quick. Okay, now what we got is we've got a section of the dogs barking and running around making noise. Then there's a section of another dog very quietly sniffing the grass. And then it goes to another section with the dogs barking and running around. Now, if you just have these butted up against one another, simple edits, uh, it goes from noisy, soft, and then back to noisy. Now, you can ease the transition for your audience without having to use a, a dissolve or a fade to black or any one of the other um, transitions that iMovie has available. You can do that with just using an audio transition and that's not something that's automatic. You have to do that manually and you can do that from here in the precision editor. Now to do that, uh, first off, let me show you what you can do with the editor itself. By grabbing and or mousing over this line up here, this is where your first clip enters the uh, edit. And you can grab this line by clicking and holding and then drag and it moves the line across the video and it shows where the uh, edit is going to come in. Now you can make this a little bit easier to see if you zoom in on the clip and that gives you a little bit more precision as far as how you do this. So you can drag this over and it gives you your uh, time readout 2.9 minutes that's where it is in the clip not necessarily the length of the clip, but that's where it's at, uh, its position in the clip. And below that, or right here, you can dry, you can do the same thing. Oh, actually, you can do the same thing by grabbing the video and just dragging it. And now the video moves underneath the edit point. This and this do the same thing. It just looks a little different. All you're doing is you're changing where this clip cuts out and the second clip cuts in. Same thing down here, where it's shaded out, this is the part of the second clip that is not seen in the video. This is the part of the second clip where that is after the edit. Up here, you've got the first clip shaded out. You won't see that part. So anyhow, down here, you can do the same thing. You can mouse over this part and you can move it so that the edit point moves along the second clip or you can grab the clip and move it to, to change where your edit point's at. If you move this one right here in the middle, it moves along both clips. So it moves the first clip, makes it longer, makes the second clip shorter. Essentially, if you want to not change the length of your video and you only want to move this edit one side or the other to make more of the second clip visible and less of the first clip visible, you can just drag this this way or drag this this way, left or right. Now we get to the audio part. If you mouse up right here, 
you get over this little line in the audio section, and you need to show waveforms for this. If you can't see these waveforms, go up here to this little film strip icon, click on that, and click on show waveforms. This turns them off and turns them on. Okay. Now that you can see the waveforms, what you can do is you can grab this little line right here and move it independent from the video. It doesn't move the audio. The audio is still locked to that video track, but it moves it, it moves this part here so that you can either change how far out the audio cuts out. So now if we cut this, we go back here and listen, the audio stops before the edit point. Now, you're thinking, well, what's the point of this? This is great if you've got, in this case, what I want to do is I want to make the transition a little bit easier from one clip to the other without using a transition, uh, a video transition. So I can take this, oops, grab this part here, and grab this piece of audio and move it out so that now the audio continues beyond the, uh, the video transition. And if you move up to where you get double arrows but without the vertical line and grab that, now you can create a fade out. So now what happens is the audio is matched to, to this video. It gets to this point and it fades out right to there. So if I go here, As I scrub along, you can hear that fade out coming in. So let's play that part. So now you see that makes it a lot easier on the ears. Then you can move this now that once you've got this fade out established, if you grab this part and move this, the fade, you can't it won't move with it when as you're dragging, but it create it moves that fade over with it. So that fade out remains. If you want to get rid of the fade out or change its length, just go back up here. Get those double arrows without the vertical line and move that around to wherever you want. So let's say we just want to make it a little bit. Move this over here. Okay. Now, you can do the same thing down here. Just move this over here. Now you can change where this audio section for the second clip comes in or out by moving it ahead if you wanted it to start earlier. Move it to the right if you wanted it to start later. And you could do the same thing with a fade in as it fades into the second audio clip. Now, for other reasons you might want to do this, if you've got two characters talking to each other and each character has their own camera, a lot of people don't have two cameras for home movies, but you can shoot two separate scenes, shoot one with, uh, uh, with the camera pointed at one character, then shoot the scene again with your, character, your camera pointed at the second character. Then when you go back to cut those two scenes together, you can transition between the two and have one character's voice overlapping where you're showing the uh, second character's face on screen. And you can do this without having a weird uh, cut in the dialogue or anything like that. You can just have uh, the audio from the first character bleed into the video from the second character, and it makes it a lot more seamless. It's very easy to do once you know how to do it in iMovie. Um, as far as editing or, or working with your overlay in the precision editor, the only thing you do is you can grab it and you can move it around. When you do this, uh, the only thing you're seeing is on the, on the overlay, let me just turn this down. On the overlay, where this little flag is, that's the anchor point for the overlay. Uh, whenever you drag the, uh, uh, the overlay clip, what it's doing is it's showing on the uh, uh, on the preview window where that flag is located on the clip that it's, in other words, this flag is right here, it's located right here, it's showing this uh, piece right here and it tells you where it's at as to where that flag, that anchor drops down at. So it's it might be useful for whatever you're doing, um, it's limited usefulness though. This is not something you can't do right from the timeline without having to be in the precision editor. Um, the other thing you can do is if you've got more than one edit you, wa you want to work with, you don't have to edit the, uh, exit the precision editor to move to the next edit. You can just scroll ahead, click on the edit right here, and it moves it over. It reopens everything so that now 
This is what used to be the second clip. It was what we were working on uh, in the lower timeline. It's moved up to the top because this is always going to be your uh, the left side of your edit, and the lower one is always going to be the right side of your edit. So from here, you can do the same, all the same things that you can before. And if you wanted to scroll to the next edit, in this case, this is the end of the video, so there is none. But if you scroll all the way to the beginning, you can click on the first one. There's not an actual edit here, but you can change. This is because it's on the left, or it's on the bottom timeline. This is the right side of the edit. So now you can grab your video and drag it out until you've got uh, more or less video in the uh, uh, at the beginning of the uh, clip. To exit the precision editor, you can either click here or just click on outside of any one of the timelines and that takes it back to the regular video. I hope that helps if you're going to be working with the precision editor or you've had any uh, questions about it. Thanks a lot.